Good afternoon. Welcome to our first October lecture. We have two this month. The second will be on Friday, and it's going to be about ship simulations, similar to pilot simulations for training ship drivers, <laughs> pilots, captains, whatever they are. Um, we're, we're so glad that Ray came out of quote, retirement, to give this talk. The last time he spoke, he told us that's probably it. But we passed in the hall uh, about a month ago, and he said, you know, I've got some good pictures I'd love to share. And we jumped on it right away. Ray is really a Renaissance man. He was a scientist at Sandia, a lecturer on Princess Cruises, an outdoorsman with uh, being the author of books, and photo uh, for a photographer. Um, he's won many awards. He, we know him primarily through the, the talks that he's given and the mural, the uh, SRC mural. He took those pictures for the muralist to paint. So every time you pass by, think of, thank you, Ray, <laughs> we appreciate it. Um, he has a patent, even, for a trolling device. Three patents, oh boy, okay. He's an avid outdoorsman, fisherman, wildlife photographer, and all-around wonderful guy. So please help me welcome President Ray Tanowski. Good afternoon, and thank you for coming. Can everybody hear? Okay, great. I know I move around here. Sometimes it'll probably go in and out a little bit. Uh, I, I also want to thank, well, of course, thank Noni for all. She does just a great job. Yeah, you don't have to worry about a thing, because Noni takes care of everything. And Eileen is the other person that does that, and she does everything just really well. Yeah, thank you. So this is probably my, my last lecture, but it's only, <laughs> Noni said the last time I said that too, but I, I think it really is. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to not only talk about the pictures that I've taken, I'm going to talk about some of the, well, I'm going to talk about the pictures I've taken for the last uh, uh, about three quarters of a century. I have one picture, I have several pictures that are pretty old but I have one particularly that's almost a, uh, three quarters of a century old. And I'll show that one pretty quick. This one, and I, I'm trying to use almost, on, on the talk, almost all new pictures since the last lecture. But this one I like so well. This is an old picture, and I'm, I'm using that, and just, you know, getting that fish in the mouth and the, Everything about right on it. it was, yeah, this is a pretty good picture. This is one of the pictures that has won one of the highest awards that I've ever received. And this is the Outdoor Writers Association of America. And it was the first place in the, uh, out, or the scenic photo. And it's been 15 or 20 years ago. I've won that award twice, so I'm really pleased that uh, I did that. And it was like three or four years separated. Uh, Another picture that has been an award winner for me is this one, and I, you, can, you know, I've entered it twice in the Outdoor Writers Association of California contest, and it won first place both times. And this one also won first place in the Outdoor Writers Association of California. Uh, the bear, and this is on Kodiak Island, so the bear was walking from this way to this way, and I, I said, you know, he's just walking away from me. I was going to see his back end. That wasn't going to be much of a picture. So I think I whistled or did something. I wasn't going to do too much. But, but, but he, uh, he turned just enough. I could get his picture, then he turned back and continued on. I like this picture of just uh, sunset on a, on a boat out on the ocean fishing. Or, And so I, I like the rays here. So this is really what makes the picture, showing the, the sun rays. What is this? 
Have any of you seen it? Ron uh, Hare, do you know what this is? It's a firefall. It's, it's a firefall at Yosemite. They, this was in the 1960s that I took this, but it ended in 68 or something like that. It was in, in that time. And, and they said that, well, the, you know, this is a natural thing. We don't want to do things that aren't natural. And so they did that. What they do is on Glacier Point, they build a bonfire on the edge of the cliff. And then when it gets dark enough, uh, they're from the valley below, somebody yells up, let the fire fall. Do I have that right? <laughs> OK. And then they push the embers over the, the, over the cliff. And as it comes down, it gets lots of oxygen, and it glows brightly. So it's pretty spectacular. This is one of my favorite pictures. And this is kind of, I was so surprised that it came out this good. And what this is, is a light swinging like a pendulum. And, uh, and then the camera's on the floor looking up. And of course, it's in a completely dark room. And the different colors are because I put, used filters in front of the camera. And I just had the camera on the floor, and I was just pushing the one filter in front of it, and then pushing a different colored filter in front of it that, to change the color. And uh, I, you know, I got it in the picture just about right. And, and I took several pictures, and the, the others were absolute garbage. And this, was, and this is what this was. And this is, a, this is my, my photo that is about 75 years old, at least 70. I, maybe 70 is more accurate, but it's, it's an old This is my dog. It was an Airedale. It's Shiner is its name. And it's in Iowa, and it's uh, fresh snow. So I'd take the dog and put him on this rock. And whenever I'd do that, he would t tilt his head like he was inquisitive about what's going on. And so uh, I, I took the picture. And you can see I got it without tracks around that disrupted. So that was how that did that. So I was, I was interested in photography for a long time. This is a, uh, a brown pelican. I'll show you a white pelican later on. But this is the brown pelican. And this is the ocean pelican. They're every place. You know, I think every place that I've been on an ocean trip, I've seen brown pelicans. And so I don't know what the limit is, but uh, all around the North, North and South America, anyway. Not in the Arctic. That's, that's not true. But in the, in the temperate waters, it's there. And we, I did two humpback uh, whale trips out of Baja, also did uh, some out of uh, Alaska. But on the second one, we saw humpbacks a lot. And so there was this the one. Most of them are males, and they're small. Well, relatively small. This is a female, and it weighs like 80,000 pounds. You know, These are, these are big, uh, 50 feet long. You can see that we've got uh, the, whole, the whole whale's out of the water. So I was so lucky to get such a, such a spectacular leap. And there's uh, the, the picture here is a, a snowy egret. And I'll talk about snowy egrets uh, later. Uh, and that the person with it is a, is, his name is Keith Frazier. And he operates a bait shop for fishermen on, uh, on the Loch Lomond Marina, which is in Marin County, just north of the Richmond uh, San Rafael Bridge. The one over here, we have bait left over after we fish. And so the, the, one of the deckhands did that. Now, the, the, the seagulls have really sharp beaks. And you, you, know, you think, OK, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I don't know if he's going to get the fish or get, get my hand. But he was willing to do that. And I guess he knew what he was doing because he came out right. We, we went to a, the place called Wild Things. And this is southwest, uh, yeah, southwest of Salinas. Uh, and the person that owns that, uh, right there, uh, he manages wild animals. He had the Exxon tiger. He had a lion that he could get. It was really a tame lion. You could use that in uh, various uh, movie or advertising settings. And so people paid him to do that. And that's how he made his money. 
they also had a business where they had like four or six safari tents, and it was it really looked like a, a safari tent you would see in uh, in Africa. Had had mosquito netting. I didn't see mosquitoes, but it had net, mosquito netting over the bed. Uh, and you stay there overnight. Then the next morning, they bring you your breakfast. But they also bring a breakfast for the for the and and they bring the the as they come here they come with the elephants uh, parading up to your cabin, and then they give you the sack. Well, you, they give you your your breakfast, but then they give you a sack of fruit, and so you can uh, feed the elephants the the fruit. So, yeah, not very many people get to feed an elephant, but they, so that was a, a great experience for Sheila, and I did too. Uh, this uh, moose up in uh, Grand Tetons, and he was up, and he he performed for me. But there was a whole line of people watching him. I was certainly wasn't the only one. He was laying down, and then he got up, and then he ambled off. But got uh, good lighting and got a, a pretty good picture, I thought. What is this? So, well, do you do you see the lake? You see a lake right here, a lake, and there's some trees around that. There's an island over here, in dark skies. There's, that's none. That, that's not like that's none of that. Uh, what it is is all clouds. The horizon is right here. This is out our window, looking west from our our fourth floor apartment, and and so these towers. If you look west out of our area, you'll see those towers. This see the the, the that's a tile roof, and it's. Uh, and, and, you know, it's part of our, our uh, structures. Uh, so it, it's not what it looks like, but it sure was spectacular. And we saw the blue moon. You, you hear about the blue moon. Well, in August, first of August, and the end of August, we had the full moon both of those times. This one, this one was during the first one. And I like it that... Uh, there's enough resolution, you can see a rim there of the sunlight on the moon, and then you can see that in, the, or in, in that uh, crater, that the crater is deep enough that it's in, in shadow. So you can see a pretty good detail on that. This, of course, is, uh, this one wasn't the same month. The last of the month, I took this picture, and it came out blue. Blue moon? Well, it really usually isn't a blue moon, but it was here. And I, uh, somebody that knows a lot more about light than I do can maybe explain to me why we we really did have a blue moon. <clears throat> now I'm, go I'm going into our local wildlife, and there's the uh, ma the mallards, of course, the male and the female, and they were on the trail actually, and I'm, I started taking pictures quite a ways from them. And then I kept moving closer and closer. They let me get really close. And so you could see really a, a lot of detail. And uh, you, you can see that uh, he has a, a band here. This one the male does. And people, people were asking me, where do you take your pictures? Well, these are hikers that uh, go hike almost every day, every day but Sunday. And they don't always go on this trail, but this is going from the clubhouse. They walk out uh, onto the arroyo at uh, the uh, Stone Ridge uh, uh, Boulevard. Maybe it's not a boulevard, but Stone Ridge Street, and then walk under the, the uh, that uh, bridge, and then go along the arroyo. Uh, and the, what you see in the background here is uh, uh, the El Charo Bridge. Now it's south, it's a private bridge at this point. It's south from the freeway, and so it's very close to us. And so you can see they're walking there and back, and that's a, a reasonable walk for them. It used to be a reasonable walk for me too, but not anymore. <laughs> so what I do rather than, than walk out there is I uh, drive out to Seize Candy. You know where Seize Candy is? Yeah. Yeah. So. So we drive out and park right there by Seas Candy. You can walk just a few steps, and you get to the trail, and then you walk uh, west towards uh, our facility, and you come to a fish ladder, and you come, and then later you come to this bridge. And under the bridge, there's a a, a, 
uh, a, a pond, a small, small lake, and the, uh, it, and so there's a lot of, and the trail goes right by it, so you're really close. Over the fish ladder, it, you go right by it, too. Uh, most of the, the arroyo this year, it, there's been so much ra uh, rain, uh, so much vegetation growing, that most of the arroyo has so many weeds you can't see. You just can't even see the water. Uh, years past, you could see the water, and you know, taken taking pictures down in that area. But the, the, the fish ladder and this pond at the Arroyo are just wonderful places to take pictures. Also down at the uh, uh, Sto Stone Ridge uh, Avenue, whatever it is, uh, just below the, the bridge there is a good place to take pictures. Some of my other favorite places are the uh, Shadow Cliffs Lake. And you know Shadow Cliffs Lake? It's, down about two miles south of us, it's off Stanley Boulevard. And that has a different set of uh, wildlife, and I'll talk some about that. A lot of the ducks are uh, great for arroyas, but, and some of them are, you spend their time at, at bigger bodies of water, like the Shadow Cliffs Lake. So between those two, you can see a lot. The campus has been a good place to take pictures. They've taken pictures of the foxes, the, uh, hawks, uh, uh, white-tailed kites, uh, so that there, we have a good picture opportunities right on campus. And there are two groundwater reclamation areas around here. One of them is just south of the tennis court, you know, across from the tennis courts, that, that uh, fenced-in area. And that's a wonderful place for wildlife. We, uh, we've seen foxes there, they've had their uh, there are dens there uh, a number of years, and so it's a wonderful place to see them, and you can get pretty close. Uh, the other one is just south of Seas Candy, and th that one, a, a few years ago, we had water in that for several months in the winter when it was raining hard. Well, you know, we had the hardest rain, the most rain we've had for a long time last uh, winter, so I thought, well, yeah, that'll be... Uh, We'll get a lot of uh, standing water there. We didn't. We got some. But in that case, we, we see a lot of uh, the, the shorebirds, like black neck stilts, avocets, uh, green leg, you know, yellow legs, and, and so on. So with, between those places, there's a lot of opportunity to take pictures. And don't be fooled. You know, this is not a zoo. There are times that I go and I don't see anything very interesting. But most of the time, you kind of, yeah, I see one or two things that are worthwhile. So the, uh, the mallard is our, our most common duck. It weighs about 2.4 pounds, one of the bigger ducks. Uh, there, there are others that are bigger, so I'm even up to six pounds on the extreme. I like, well, the, a good picture has to have a number of things, but it has to have a good background, it has to have good lighting, and I think this has all of that. So, and oh, another thing that it has is a catch light in the eye. Now, if you have a portrait taken, you're going to have a catch light in your eye, probably two. Uh, and uh, it gives it the, the uh, picture a little more life, and so that's a good feature. Sometimes it's sun, you know, it's a sun and reflection. Sometimes the sun is the other way, and you're not going to get that. And, that. and that can still be a good picture, but this adds something when you, when you can get it. And then the female, I, I like to do action pictures. Uh, they're challenging, but I like to do them. And, uh, it's to get a good one, you say, okay, well, that, that was a special day. So how many, how many males and how many female mallards in that picture? One male, three females. Okay, and that's the obvious answer. But I want to talk about that a little bit. So the... The, the mallard, during the, the mating season, is, is this color. That's, that's the mallard during the mating season. What about when the, uh, during the non-mating season? What's a mallard look like? Yeah. So uh, the, the, they look a lot like a female mallard. And, but there is a, thing, uh, a characteristic that betrays them. Maybe if you were an expert on ducks, you'd do it with a, pick up half a dozen, dozen characteristics that betray them. 
But what they do is look at the look at the beak. Yeah. All, all all yellow, orange, whatever color. Nothing else on it. But the females normally have black on the top of their beak. Oh. And so if you look at this one, there's black right there on that beak. Look at this one, black on that beak. Those are females. What about this one? No black. That's that's male. So the answer is two and two, actually. And you know, it was a trick question, but I, I thought that uh, I'd make it, 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 try to tell in the way that you remember it. So I listed the the ducks that I could just list off the top of my head. Uh, so I've got 15. Most of them are in the arroyo. Uh, some of them are, are both in the arroyo and in uh, the body of water, which is usually shadow cliffs. Uh, and so those, there are, I listed 15. I'm going to show you a few pictures of them because they're so colorful and so different. So this is the uh, this is the gadwall. Male is here and female. And this one is a, a wood duck, our most beautiful bird. Now you know this one we're lucky to have them close by because they are uh, in shadow cliffs. This last year I did not see any of them. The year before, I saw several of them. And it, this one is in its mating colors. It's a lot uh, less spectacular when it's not in its mating colors. And so here it is again. But I'm going to go back. No, I'm, I'm not. So you can see this hood and the, the distinct black and white in the colors. They just look like they're painted. It doesn't look like it's a real bird. The females have this uh, characteristic of the eye, so it's very distinctive also. So the hooded mergansers, another spectacular bird. Sometimes this hood is all the way up when they, they get excited. They lift the hood up, and it's about a 90-degree uh, hood, uh, uh, patch of white there. And, and, the, and the female has her own characteristics, too. Uh, <laughs> So look at the beak. Now you know a duck beak is normally kind of a flat thing, but these aren't. These are a pointed beak. And if you enlarge that picture and look at it carefully, you'll see a row of needle-sharp little teeth on the top beak and the lower beak. And they catch fish. Uh, I don't know what all they eat, but one of the, th the primary parts of their diet is fish. So they have these uh, sharp needles that will hold the, the fish if they get it, you know, the, they, they, they aren't, it's not going to slip out of their beak. And there's a common merganser. It's quite a bit bigger than the hooded merganser, but it has the same characteristic with the uh, pointed beak, and the, it's a fish eater. I actually have a picture of it eating a fish. The ducks have different ways of taking off. Some of them just explode out of the water. A duck will fly 50 miles per hour. Amazing. Its wing beat is 10 beats per second, up to 10 beats per second. They're hard to, to photograph the if they're moving, but man, they're, they're going. You can catch them as they're, as they're taking off or as they're landing, then they're slowed down. And then you've got a decent chance of getting their picture. And a, uh, this is a buffalo head, which is primarily a pond fish, a lake fish. So this is taken at shadow cliffs. And I look at it, and the first thing you look at it, say, well, gee, that's like a, a buffalo head. But it's not at all. You know, the only thing that's similar is this hooded, the white hood on it, but almost everything else is different. And the female looks like this. Common golden eye, great golden eye, cinnamon teal, uh, American widgeon, Ma male is here, female is here. Uh, Dad ball pair. We, I showed those before, didn't I? Uh, there are a number of calls that we see. I don't emphasize those very much. Most of the way we see them, they're flying overhead and they don't do any, they don't land. But these were landed out at, or, or this one was landed out at Shadow Cliffs and right along the shoreline. So I was pretty close and it was flying some. Uh, you can see that why it's called a ring built uh, uh, gull. Uh, that peak right there, but I thought its head was really a pretty head, so I 
emphasize that and enlarge that. And so going away from the birds for a moment, is uh, we see the dragonflies. Well, they're really hard to photograph. They're so small that you probably don't, you, they, your uh, camera won't focus on them. And once in a while they will, or if you find them landed, then you can get the focus on them. If they're going forward and back from you, there's something in focus, but not very much. When you're using the high, uh, high uh, lens, the, the long lenses, uh, they don't have very much focus. Yes, and you know, we're talking about uh, fractions of an inch, and of course, depending on what the f-stop is, but that much. But when they're uh, broadside to you, then yeah, they're kind of all the same distance, and so everything's in focus. And we, I like the white, the highlight. I guess when I say that, there's a, whoops, so I'm going to go back. That uh, this is not quite in focus, but the wings and all of the, it are in focus. And, and, and continuing on the insect area, we, we have a lot of golden crowned sparrows, one of the most common birds we have. Uh, and you can see it's, uh, they, you can see the characteristic. But you can probably see just a little bit there. It has some bug that's uh, caught in its mouth, and that's going to be part of a meal. Another bird, mockingbird, now with a beetle. This is a, uh, a yellow rumped uh, warbler. And the one, oh, right over here, right here. Is one that I've got on a, a regular day. I just have, uh, got to get that picture. But then at another time of the year, I got this picture. And it's the same bird, same picture. Yeah. So, or, and, and anyway, so it's black and it's bright black. So, but it has a, the uh, yellow marks the same place. There's a yellow on Forbler number. But this also has yellow in the, uh, places like the, that one does. So I thought it was interesting to see the difference between the bird in a, during a different part of the year. Red-winged blackbird, I grew up in Iowa. We had a lot of red-winged blackbirds. I think they're a little different than this, but I think a lot of you are, are probably familiar with these birds and have uh, grown up with them. Uh, Western blue bird, we don't see them too often, but they are uh, pretty spectacular. And they're bluebird size, not very big. So now the hummingbird, and we used to see a lot of bird, hummingbirds here. Uh, one year when we were actually doing the construction on the uh, phase two, I found, uh, our, our people told me where they were. But I had five uh, hummingbird nests that I was following. So it was uh, really a lot of opportunity. Well, I've taken a lot of pictures of them. I'm not paying as much attention. But they're not there as much either. We certainly have our hummingbirds. Uh, this one was taken in the, in the last year or two. So uh, I, you know, I like that one because the wings are so sharp. And then this one because it's got its beak buried in the flower so much. They w weigh about uh, uh, 0.14 ounces. I mean, there's nothing to them. How do you get the heart and the circulatory system and all that stuff? Uh, and the, that was the female, and now the male looks like this. It's a nice, uh, bright, red, maroon head. And we have beautiful small birds, the finches. Some of the people that have their feeders out on their, uh, on their uh, patio or uh, on their balconies they have some uh, beautiful birds. This one was in a, f uh, in a fence, as you can see. And usually, I like to have the birds that are alone. I don't like to say, have anything showing that well, they talk about the hand of man, no sign of the hand of man. And that's one of the requirements if you're taking a, a wildlife photography. That, is, that dis disqualifies it, you see, the, the evidence of the hand of man. So this one would be disqualified in that. But I like it. You know, I think it. I think it makes a nice frame. And then I'm going to show you four pictures, and I'm going to let. There's something I want to show you about these pictures. So let me just go through them and let you see uh, if it's obvious what I'm talking about. So two, three, four. What? What? what do you do you see what I'm trying to tell you? Well, 
wings. Synchronized wings, exactly. And they, you know, they're beating about 10 beats per second, some, at least during the, the, the fastest flying. And, but they still are synchronized. Now, the geese, that's the same thing on the, on the geese, that they have synchronized wings. And I th speaking of geese, I have to show you one picture of uh, ducklings or goslings or something. So you can see the little fluff balls there. They're so cute. And another, well, I'm going to talk about hawks. I think that's what's going in there. Uh, this is the osprey, and it uh, is, a, is a fish eating bird. So uh, where we find these is out at Shadow Cliffs. And uh, they'll sit on, uh, uh, on the branches out over the water, and then when they see a bird, it, they go out after the bird. Or, or the, the bird, yeah, fish. A fish. <laughs> yeah. And this one I am including a sandhill crane, and we used to do sandhill crane trips, but what it entailed was going up to the Lodi area and then going out in the evening and watching the, the sandhill cranes fly in and out. And I wanted to tell you that, well, first of all, that the Sacramento San Joaquin Valley is just a marvelous place to see wild, uh, see the wildlife, the bird life, the ducks. And you, you know, there, there are flocks of thousands, tens of thousands, maybe. Uh, we were over at the same place, I'll tell you where in a minute, but, and, and it was not this time, but there were uh, tens of thousands of ducks of different, uh, ducks and geese of different varieties. And they took off, and it was like a freight train. Man, they, it was really, they made a lot of noise. So it was quite an experience. This is at the San Joaquin Wildlife Area, and the way you get to this is, by, is drive east uh, towards Tracy, go south on Highway 5, take Highway 132 towards Modesto, and then go about a quarter of the way to Modesto and turn north. Uh, there is a, they have two parts to that park, and one of them is just out in an open field, they have this uh, observation place. And, uh, you know, when we got there the first time, well, it didn't seem very much going on. I said, well, gee, this is out in the middle of nowhere, nothing's happening here. And so, but uh, then we see uh, the uh, sandhill cranes flying, and so they'd fly pretty close to us. And this is one of the groups of sandhill cranes that we got, probably the best one. And they have a red head, they're really, they're spectacular, and a big bird. And so it, it takes about, it's about 40 miles, a little more than 40 miles to get there. It's, you know, freeway driving almost all the way. So it's pretty quick to get there. And you can see, you know, either the sandhill cranes, which we saw on both trips, but you can also see them, uh, the, uh, the variety of uh, the wildlife. What, can you name this hawk? What's, what hawk is this? Red tail hawk. That was pretty easy, isn't it? So, so uh, if, if you see a hawk out here and somebody says, what kind of hawk is that? Well, most of the time you say red-tailed hawk because they're almost always red-tailed hawks. Not always, but almost always. So that's, that's our uh, dominant uh, hawk. Uh, got a picture. Uh, I don't get pictures of them eating very often. So this one is, is uh, you can see him eating. And he's eating a, a mouse or a vole or something like that. And the thing that identifies it to me, and you may, you may or not see, there's its tail right here. And that's a leg, I think, is what it's uh, working on. So maybe, maybe that's a little gruesome. Uh, but, and uh, of course, taking the pictures I'm taking off, that's, that's something you can do. But sometimes it's OK, that, and he's in perfect position. The sun angle's right. Uh, I want to get a picture of that. that Hawk taking off. Well, I waited over a half hour for him to take off, maybe as much as 40 minutes. And sometimes I just give up and say, okay, he, he's not in the mood to fly today. And he'll fly soon because he's up on a pole, he's watching, he's looking for a, uh, something that would, is uh, food for him. Uh, I want to talk about preening. All the birds preen, it's really important to them. What they're doing is they're cleaning their feathers. Well, that's one of the things they're doing. They're cleaning and straightening their, their feathers. Uh, and what they do, it's pretty obvious here, that the, 
hawk gets the base of a feather, but gets his uh, beak around the base of the feather, then slides it out here to clean the, that feather. Like here, he's finishing up, cleaning to the tip of the feather. And they'll spend out, well, I don't know about hours, a lot of time. You know, they do that, and, oh, that's good, I, got a, I like that picture. I take a few pictures and I say, well, you know, I'm ready for something else, but, but they're, that's, they're not do that. The other thing they do, particularly the ducks, they have a, a oil gland to the back of their back, the front of their tail, and they, go, they get oil from that gland, and then they clean, the, they clean their feathers and they oil their feathers. Now, a, a bird that, uh, that is waterproof, he, uh, the, the ones like the ducks, uh, they're, they're water, they waterproof their feathers by oiling them, and so they float on it just fine, and they take off. They don't don't get uh, uh, their feathers wet and you know sogged up, and uh, so they have a lot of extra weight. So it's a really important part, and you can see the duck over here, uh, preening, and part of their preening is they're going to change from the. Um, uh, the, the mating colors to the, uh, the non-mating the non colors. By the way, I saw the first uh, ones with the, with the mating colors early this month. We saw a couple of, uh, of ducks, but before that, from like June, we did, uh, you know, they're just not there. They're, they're the ones that, are, that look more like the female than, than a male. And they uh, like to, to pray, uh, the other, and they uh, do this stretch uh, after they, they're through preening. Uh, eager to preen, you can see over here uh, reaching in and picking a feather, and then over here, you know, he's got his feather that he's cleaned, that particular feather. The, uh, I love taking pictures of the eager. Probably my favorite bird to take pictures of. I like them all, you know, but this, these are, are really great. And they are... The important thing with the, the, uh, most pictures is getting a good background. Of course, getting it in focus and doing all that, getting good lighting, but getting a good background. So this time over here that you can see that it's backlit, but uh, by uh, uh, adjusting the uh, f-stop, the lighting for the, the, the uh, shadow, then you can get that kind of picture. And getting a picture like this, and you know, you get the uh, the blue water behind it, uh, and, and so I, I I love the pictures. Uh, so now we're this is the different type of egret. By the way, an egret is a heron. It's not the other way around. But the heron family is big, and it includes egrets and lots of different herons. Uh, so got a the the Snowy egret uh, weighs about a little less than a pound, actually. So they're, you know, birds look a lot bigger than, than a lot heavier than they are. <clears throat> so, but the snowy egret has a black beak and yellow legs, particularly yellow feet. Uh, and the great egret has the opposite. Great egret is about three times as heavy. And it has the opposite uh, beak and foot coloration, and I got a picture with a one with a with a picture with a fish. Uh, the great eagle is, is uh, looking for a fish, and he, this is just below the El Charo uh, uh, pond, just below the dam there, and you can see well he got a fish. Now the pictures are the same. This is just an enlargement of it, and so you can see the fish uh, in a little more detail. Most of the time, I get the, the fish pictures, and they are up uh, there. You know, they got them up. They're above the water, and they're holding them. But here, I've got one where he's actually catching it. Or just caught it. Uh, the, and you can see that we look at these places like the arroyo. There's no fish in there. We don't see any fish. Well, maybe a minnow or something like that. But that's not entirely true, because we've got a lot of variety of fish as they catch. And uh, these are all caught in the arroyo. And that looks like a little bass or something, or bluegill. So uh, there's quite a variety of fish. Uh, this one is a, uh, a green heron, another member of the heron family. 
doesn't have the long neck like the uh, great uh, blue heron. Uh, but I, I like the uh, coloration of the wings. And this is out of Shadow Cliffs. Yeah, I want to talk about lizards a little bit. Yeah, go on. If you look at the, the two lizards, this, this one is one that was just one of the garden variety lizards that we see here every, every few days that we look for them. Um, but this one is an iguana that is in Mexico. But this one, I wanted to point out something. You know, the lizard can, if you, if you take, if it loses its tail, it'll regrow the, the tail. And you can see he's in the process of regrowing a tail. And uh, this is the uh, lizard. And you can see what he's caught. And I say lizard lunch. And I say call it a two-course meal. You'll see why in a minute. But you look at that and look at the lizard carefully. And what do you see? The, he's, he doesn't have a tail. And, the, the, uh, and this was on the trail just behind seas. It was really in the, very close to seas. And so he went back, he ate that, swallowed that, and then he went back in and he got something else. And so I looked at that and said, gee, that's kind of a funny looking worm. It's kind of triangular. It was really active. It was sometimes straightened out, sometimes curled around the beak. And what is that? It's a tail, yeah. And if you blow this up right here, there are like eight, and then any eight protrusions there. The tail, I thought it would be bitten off, but that's not the case. The tail is designed to come off, and it doesn't lose blood. It's got to have blood to, to go to the tail. But when it loses its tail, that's all closed off, and it doesn't lose blood. Uh, and the tail, now, you know, it, it's, it's a goner. It's not going to do it. It's not going to survive. But... Uh, but it's active in trying to protect the uh, lizard. And so it's, it'll uh, be active for about tw uh, 20 minutes, maybe a half hour. And so that uh, if, you know, if you've if got a bird that has that in its mouth, oh, I've got to protect this. This is trying to get away. And so it's, it's uh, a really a good uh, uh, strategy. Didn't work this time, but you know, a lot of times it probably does. <laughs> Great blue heron. So uh, I like the the coloration of I like the coloration of the great blue heron here. Just you know, good background. But here we heard a, a bullfrog. It sounded like a bullfrog down by the uh, fish ladder that I talked about on the arroyo. And then one time we went and uh, this we saw this. Well. We didn't hear any, the bullfrog any time after that. So, yeah, he, he got the bullfrog. That was a pretty good meal for him. And the, uh, uh, the, the uh, great blue heron was uh, straight, just going straight ahead. And then all of a sudden, he, it saw something off the side. And so it did a twist there uh, to get to the, uh, what, wherever that, that uh, uh, potential meal was. On this one, uh, you know, I have never seen them have such a distinct pattern here of the black and white. Uh, and so this is kind of unique. But I've seen, now that I saw this, I've looked at some of the other pictures. And yeah, there's some black and white there. So it looks like I think of him as being in a tuxedo or something. <laughs> and one of, one of our biggest birds is the wild turkeys. Uh, 6.2 pounds, or, yeah, 16.2 pounds is, is the 16, yeah. Oh, that's a good, I'll, I'll eat. <laughs> yeah, be a good Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, a little bit tough, but other than that. Yeah. So you can see it, and it uh, will be just kind of normal, then all of a sudden it would just flare out those, uh, the, the feathers and make this huge, it looks like he's a lot bigger than he he is when he's not flaring his, all his feathers. When he flares those feathers, it sounds like an, a, 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 a Venetian blind or, or the shutters. Like we have shutters in our window. If you open the shutters kind of uh, violently a little bit, then you, you get a click on that. Same click, same sound, 
when he opens his feathers. It's, he's got <coughs> some mechanism that just uh, swings those out. And so this is the, uh, the, the male and the female. And you can see a lot more sleek in what, what it look, looks like. I think they're terribly ugly. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I, I, uh, 16.2 pounds. Oh, I, I go to the, uh, uh, the textbook, or the book, bird book by Sibley. And I, it's nice, I don't know, it's out of the society or whatever it is, but he's a, a authority on birds. And he, every bird in there, he has a, a, a weight lifted, listed for it. So, you know, I, I, I don't know how you could get a better number than what he provides. So those are the weight numbers that I'm going with. So there is a bird here that we have that's a little bit bigger than that, 16.4 pounds, but I don't know. I mean, they're the same as far as I'm concerned. And these are the white pelicans. Now, the brown pelicans you see out in the ocean are a lot less than that, about half the weight. But uh, and we usually see a lot of these out at Shadow Cliffs. This last year, I didn't see any, but uh, we usually see a lot of them out at Shadow Cliffs. And there's one other bird that's bigger. You know what kind of bird that is? And it's, uh, there was a, it was a publication that there was a flock of six of them that were at Mount Diablo within the last two or three weeks. And the first time in 100 years that they'd had this. And the California condor. And so, but they weigh about 23 pounds. I mean, they're 50% heavier than these birds. Uh, yeah, they have a huge wingspan, ugliest uh, yeah, sin. <laughs> Once in the last year or two, uh, I don't know if it was last year, but maybe the year before that, I was out at the pond under the El Charo Bridge, and there, was the, there were some ducks there, and all of a sudden they kind of all flew away. Uh, and I, I heard a swirl of water, uh, something happening, and it was uh, a, uh, a river otter. River otter is a big animal. It can weigh up to about 50 pounds. Yeah. And look at the tail on them. They have a really powerful tail. They are great swimmers. They really move. Uh, when they fight, uh, switch that tail, uh, they, they take off. So got a couple of views of him here. And you can see it between the tail and the, and the body, he's pretty long. So there's a body, and then the tail is maybe as long as the body is. And so kind of a cute thing. Then uh, they are, are they're, uh, okay on land as well as in water. So it's, uh, they, you know, I, and, and they're not, they're, they're kind of a mean animal. If you saw one approaching, you don't know, say, well, this is something, I'll just feed this little guy. Don't do that. I mean, they, they uh, could be mean. And so the, there were two of them. So uh, I've seen them that time. I've never seen them any other time. They're muskrat. Now, this, the muskrat weighs about four pounds. So it's a lot, lot, lot smaller. Uh, and... I've seen them those a couple of times along this arroyo. Once, once just below the bridge uh, at Stonehenge uh, Drive Bridge. Uh, and this one was between the, uh, uh, the fish ladder and the, and the uh, pond at, at, at the Char uh, El Charo. And you know what these are. and they're, but they are, they're not the same animal exactly. You know, we have two varieties primarily of uh, rabbits. And so you can see that one of them is called a cottontail. There's a cottontail. And it, doesn't, it has uh, pretty big ears, but not like this guy. I mean, the jackrabbit has huge ears. And so I've got both of them where their, their feet are off the ground. So I thought that's kind of cool. And you... The, uh, the foxes, this is taken out at uh, the uh, water reclamation, groundwater reclamation area south of the tennis court. No, what, east, southeast of the tennis courts, yeah. And they had, he had a, uh, a family of like four kids. 
And there are a couple of pictures of the kids. So he's just nuzzling him over here. Now this guy is looking out, and fortunately he had some sun on him, so he had a nice uh, catch light in his eyes. And they are, you know, they're, they're, they're the youngsters, and they're scrapping and playing. And we have deer. Uh, and the deer, uh, we've, we used to see a lot of deer, not so much anymore. When they put, put in the uh, uh, car mart, uh, they did a lot of uh, excavation of material, and they messed up a lot of our, ear, our deer habitat. But they uh, lived down in this water reclamation area down by the tennis courts. And there's got another one who got his, all, all of his feet in the air. So uh, the, that's the uh, end of my talk. And I want to thank you for being here. And uh, I appreciate all the support. Uh, and so we. We'll uh, open it up for questions. And you know, a lot of this is, is in walking distance if you want to spend some time looking for them. So thank you. So, you have a question, I'll come around. Okay, one thing I wanted to say is I've been doing calendars every year. I've been doing them through Costco, and that seemed to work okay. But it was still kind of, you know, just a, a bit of a hassle. So I'm not going to do them this year. I might do them for our kids. I don't know. But what I think I will do is I will do calendars, but I won't make calendars for anybody. If you want calendars, uh, you, can, you can take my calendar base and go out and, uh, and purchase calendars through Shutterfly or wherever you do it. But I'll be glad to give you that. It's a lot more economical if you can get several calendars uh, or at a time. Uh, so you know, it, it'd be, if you want to do that, Probably good to get a group of people together and order calendars. Uh -huh. Well, first of all, Ray, that was absolutely incredible. Thank you, thank you. Um, it was wonderful. I was wondering, now, when you get those really close-ups, how far are you from them? I, I know you're using a telephoto lens, but yeah. are you 50 feet away, 25 feet away? You know, of course it varies, but uh, probably 20, 25 feet is a, is a good close distance. Uh, and a lot of times it's more than that, uh, depending on what they are. And the, the uh, very first pictures of the ducks on the trail, I mean, I don't know, I was maybe eight or ten feet away from them. I was close. And so that, you know, it was really filled the frame and it was so sharp. Okay. I, I know you must take a lot of pictures. And I know you say some and you discard some. What percentage of the total number of pictures <laughs> you take do you keep? You know, I might keep 30%, but 30%, but, but, but of those 30%, probably a tenth of them ever, I would ever use. Uh, uh, some, I, I grade them as best, good, and fair, you know, and the fair and the good, the fair get thrown away right away, and the good get thrown away pretty quickly. Sometimes I go, oh, that was a, that's still a good picture, I don't want to throw it away. But eventually I do, because I've got better pictures. And when I do all of that, I'm down to, I don't know, 20% or less, maybe 10. And, you know, it's, the game is you take lots of pictures because you're looking for that one good one. And it's so cheap to take them now and so easy to throw them away. There's somebody, John, so John over here. She had one. Nobody else has one? With that picture of the great blue that had the big frog in yeah. it, how long did you have to wait? I mean, did you catch it when it was moving? I did not. When I saw that, the great blue heron, it had the frog. Wow. Yeah. That was impressive. I wondered how long the great blue had to wait for it to stop moving. I don't know about that, but you know, it takes a while for them to swallow some of this big stuff. Yeah. Crayfish is one where it's really that uh, you get a big crayfish, and it's got these claws, like lobster claws. And you know they don't want that going down their gullet, so they really disable that crayfish before they swallow it. Thank you. Over here. I hope this is not a stupid question, but what keeps those birds that love fish away from our koi pond? Uh, 
the, uh, so there's a couple of things. The koi pond, I think, is designed so that it has ledges and stuff. And if the bird is coming in. Yeah. What? Oh, okay, I'll get up closer. Thank you. Uh, but the koi pond has ledges and uh, pockets of water that they can get away. They can get, uh, get where a bird can't normally get to. They're also big. You know, the, 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 a lot of the birds here, just, they're, they're not going to handle this three or four or five pound uh, koi fish. Uh, I think we've had ex uh, experiences where uh, animals have gotten to them and eaten them. I, I think, you know, we lost most of them at one time, but the only ones that I know of. All right. Now, uh, for you, spot a good, uh, good shot. And do you do the single shot or do the multiple zip, 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 zip? I do. I do that 10 frames per second. Uh, fast as old as you. What I mean is, do you do the multiple exposures or whatnot? Oh, I do not do multiple exposure. I do not, you know, I don't bracket. I used to always bracket, but I don't anymore. And the reason why is I have a Sony camera and it's a WYSIWYG. I don't know, I've never heard of a WYSIWYG from, uh, describing a camera. But what you see is what you get. So, you get. so you're seeing in the viewfinder exactly what the picture is. And so you can say, okay, this isn't too bad. I'll get this picture. And, and, and it's, kind of, it's what I want. Uh, and then, then you can just maybe an f-stop up or an f-stop down or more, but to really, you know, to maintain good pictures, you want to get a, you, know, you want to nail the exposure pretty close. Are there any more questions? No? Well, let's thank Ray again. Thank you, thank you.